So you want to learn what it's like working as a software developer. Well, in this video, I'm going to be going over the tools I use in my day to day work, except for something like Google, because everyone uses that and also Stack Overflow as well as YouTube, because I use that sometimes for tutorials along with other online resources. But other than that, these are the tools I use. Now, some of these I use every single day. Some of them I use once in a while and some of them I rarely use, but I do know about them in case one day I'm solving a problem and I'm like, oh, I know about this tool I can use. So it's important to keep adding tools to your toolbox just in case you might need it one day. Now I'm on a Windows machine, but pretty much all these tools or a flavor of it will work on your operating system. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I have to start out with my go-to, my number one, Maybe not my most used, but it is up there. And that is Visual Studio. Visual Studio is an IDE or integrated development environment. And it's a combination of a bunch of tools. It's a combination of a text editor, which has syntax highlighting, code completion, and a bunch of other stuff. It's like a text editor on steroids. It also has a compiler, a debugger, a window for running and keeping track of unit tests. And that's just really scratching the surface. I use it for writing out server side code, mostly building out APIs. And the thing I like about Visual Studio is that it does a lot of the work for you. For example, this is a brand new project. I have not added any code myself. And if we just press, press run, and as you can see here, we already have a website. I mean, it's very bare bones, but um, you know, it, it works, which is just amazing. Another cool thing about Visual Studio is you have access to the NuGet package manager. These are pre-written libraries that you download and it just works. Need to hook into a database, just download the appropriate package, add your credentials, and you're good to go. Speaking of databases, this here is SQL Server Management Studio. I'm running version 18.5, and it's a database management system. Basically, it lets you connect to a database and do things like create tables, run queries, write stored procedures, pretty much anything you can think of doing with a database. It's also written by Microsoft, so it integrates seamlessly with Windows. I used Oracle at my last job, and let me tell you, I had to download and install all the drivers, which was just a pain in the, let's just say pain in the neck. And I'm still a little traumatized because I'm not really the type of person that likes to tinker a lot with the settings. I just wanna download something and have it work out of the box. The more I've been working in software, the more I appreciate stuff like that. So here you have your object explorer on the left, and I'm actually connected to a database living in Azure. So it can connect to databases in the cloud. And yeah, it has all the basic stuff like your databases, tables, views, etc. You guys get the idea. And then on the right here, we have the editor to run all your queries. And at the bottom would be the result of that query. All right, next up we have Git. Git is a tool that you can use to save the different versions of your code. People who are new sometimes get confused between Git and GitHub. GitHub is a website to store your code repository remotely, and it's completely different than Git. One reason for using Git would be, you know, say you updated your code, you released it, and you found out there's a bug. Git makes it very easy to just roll back to the previous version that's bug free, and then you can fix your bug and then release that. It also has the concept of branching, which makes it very easy for multiple developers to work on the same code base at the same time, and then just merge everything back together. Now you can use Git from the command line, but most people prefer using it with some kind of tool that gives you a visual representation of things like the version history, the branching. I like using a tool that's completely free called Fork. Now, Fork is a desktop client for Git. It allows you to easily see what features are being worked on and by whom. And also very important to mention, it does have a dark mode, so you know it's good. But basically on the left, you have things like your list of repositories, branches, etc. And then you have your main area, which just displays all your commits and branches, basically everything you would want in a Git desktop client. It does also have a very good tool for handling merge conflicts. So if two developers edited the same file, you can use the merge conflict tool to resolve them. Now with Git and Fork, the project is still stored locally on my computer. But when you're working on a project at a company, with multiple people, the code base needs to be stored securely in a remote location. So what do we actually use to store our repository? Well, we use a tool called Azure DevOps. Now Azure DevOps or ADO for short, is our one-stop shop for most of the projects and documentation we use. It's very similar to Jira, which is the issue tracking software made by Atlassian. This is basically Microsoft's version of that. 
ADO has Kanban boards or Kanban or however you want to say it. Um, but this is something that I'd look at every single day and it lets you track all the work that's currently being worked on and the state that it's in. So for example, you'll have say a bunch of features you need to implement. You'll know what is new. You'll know what is actively being worked on. Say it's you know ready to be tested. It'll be in the staging area. And then once it's deployed, then you would move it there. And this just lets you keep track of what work you have and, and what state it's in. There is also a repo section, which is where you can view all the repositories or code that's stored. And it also has a cool pull request feature. So before you submit your code, uh, you could have another developer look at it and do a code review on it. All right, so next up we have Postman. Now this tool is an absolute beast. This is used for testing backend APIs. And the thing I really like about it is that even though it's such a beast of a program, it's very easy to get set up. Say you wanted to test an API, what you would do is you would simply just create a new tab. You would enter your request URL. Say we were just doing something simple like google.com. You would just hit send. And as you can see down here, this is the response that we get from google.com. And this is the uh, this is the actual HTML that your browser would receive. And we can even preview this. And as you can see, it doesn't have the images or anything, but this is what you know, this is google.com. So say you wanted to use this with your own API, you would just do something like myapi.com. And then you can add different things like, you know, if you have any authorization, if you have a body, you want to send some JSON data, you could do that. You could set up uh, different variables. So say you have different variables for like authentication, you could do that. And you could even set it to different environments. So say I'm in development, but now I want to do some testing. I just switch to testing and it can switch all your variables to the proper environment. So I get, I definitely give Postman two thumbs up and I, in my opinion, it's by far the best tool for API testing. All right, next up we have Microsoft Teams. Now this is a kind of like a chat app that's made by Microsoft. And we actually used to use Slack, um, which is just another, you know, it basically does the same thing, but we switched over to Teams just because it integrates with Windows very well because it's, they're both made by Microsoft. And I mean, it's really simple. It's, it's, just a, it's just a chat application. You know, you could have different teams, you know, hence the name, and you can type in there, you can, you know, share files, etc. Probably my favorite feature of this is the calendar. So say you have your calendar set up in Outlook, it actually is able to pull that data and say you do have a meeting, you simply would hit this join button here and there you go, you can have audio and video chat and you don't have to use any type of third party software to do that. So this is like a very powerful tool. I think Teams is very like snappy. It's very, you know, it's, it has a very clean look. So, um, I mean, I, I really like it so far. All right, so next up we have three text editors and the first one is Notepad++. Now, I just love the simplicity of Notepad++. It's very lightweight, so it, it loads very quickly and I kind of just use this for like, if I just need to save something really quick or if I need to take a quick note, I just pull this up, type it down. I mean, I wouldn't ever use it for like any software development, but just for like other stuff, I mean, don't sleep on it. Now, another text editor and, and probably the best text editor for uh, Windows for software development is Visual Studio Code. I don't use this a whole lot since I do most of my development in Visual Studio. But for example, I was using a framework uh, called Vue.js, which is a JavaScript framework. Um, it didn't have good integration with Visual Studio Code. I don't know if it's changed in the last year, but I do remember using Visual Studio Code for that. And uh, they have a really good plugin or extension. I think they call it, it's all the same thing, but they had a very good plugin for uh, for Vue. Another text editor I just wanted to briefly mention is Atom. You know, just another text editor for development. I use this on my Mac, but um, don't really use it at work. Just wanted to mention it. All right, next up we have Remote Desktop Connection Manager. Basically, it allows you to store the remote desktops that you, you know, whatever you want to connect to, and it allows you to group them. And this is great for if you work in a company that connects to a lot of servers, like for example, we have different servers for different environments, for different projects. Normally you would just have your remote desktop connection and you'd have to type in like whatever my server and you'd have to do that every time unless it is in the drop down menu. This allows you to just have everything saved uh, in different groups and you could literally just double click on it and it works. All right, next up we have our penultimate tool, which is Beyond Compare 4. Now I use this tool to compare two documents together or really any form of text. And what you would do is you would just go to text compare and then now you have two sides. So if you wanted to just copy some text on the left, you'll see that it's in red now because it, it's comparing it against a blank text field. 
But say we put some more text in here and we can see that there is one line that's different right here. And I mean, that's really it. Um, it's very similar to the diff tool that you have in Linux. Um, but I mean, this tool is, is really a lifesaver, you know, I mean, this is a small example here, but say you have files with, you know, hundreds of lines, as you can see, it can get pretty difficult to spot that with your eye. So this is really helpful for that. I don't use it a lot, but when I do, it's a, it's a lifesaver. And finally, we have this tool called Agent Ransack. This is the same, if you're familiar with the grep function in Linux, um, basically it searches a document for a specified, um, specified text that you provide. So for example here, we're gonna look in this folder here and we're gonna search for anything that contains the text file. So if we run the search there, we see that we get one file and it shows all the instances and the line numbers of when we have file written there. Now, this was really helpful one time at work when we have a we have a test email account and it was getting spammed by one of our applications and we didn't know which one it was. So we did a copy on the body of the email and we did a search on all our projects and we were able to pinpoint the pro the application that was you know, that was guilty. All right, guys, those are the tools that I use in my day to day software development work. Hopefully you guys found that useful. Hopefully there is something in there that maybe you guys didn't know about that you guys could try out and hopefully it helps you guys in your work. If there is something that I didn't mention that you thought would be useful, definitely let me know. But other than that, that's all I wanted to go over in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, happy coding.